guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are talking about those tropical cyclones we've been talking about for about a week now. They are now named Tropical Storm Laura and Tropical Storm Marco. They both have upgraded to Tropical Storms. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also invite you to check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and our very interactive Facebook group. Now, for today's comment of the day... I want to know which of these two tropical storms you think will be most impactful, Marco or Lara. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, let me know why a lot of people don't do that. All right, now let's get into this video. And first things first, we're just taking a look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook here of the entire Atlantic. And now uh, remember our Africa system, that one has kind of been downgraded in percentage. That one's not looking as good as it did, and I thought that was definitely possible, especially due to the fact that a lot of storms have moved through that area very recently. Uh, that usually kind of hinders the chances for development of any storms behind it for just a little bit. Uh, it kind of eats up some of the energy and doesn't leave a lot to work with behind for other storms. But as you can see, we have Marco and Lara there in our basically our western Atlantic regions there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the cone forecast from NOAA for both of these two storms. Just take a look at where they're expected to track. All right, so here is Tropical Storm Laura. As you can see, there's been a major, major change in the track, and it's not been a big, big shift in actual distance, but the impacts that it's going to have is significantly changed. And here it is. We, yesterday, yesterday morning, uh, the National Hurricane Center and, and myself uh, thought that this storm would go north of Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Cuba, and then south of Florida, right in between there. And that would allow for it to develop quite uh, significantly in between those areas with little to no in land interaction. Now, all of a sudden, we have the storm is directly over Puerto Rico, and it's expected to track directly over Dominican Republic, Haiti, and then directly over Cuba. That is going to take its toll on this storm, and it's not going to be able to develop while it's over those islands. Those mountains are going to eat it up very, very significantly. And here's the thing. We're going to expect major impacts here for Puerto Rico now, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba. All of these regions are going to expect significant impacts, as well as Bahamas. I would say moderate impacts for you guys. It's not going to be a direct landfall. However, uh, I do expect some impacts. Even Jamaica could see some... Uh, rain from this one and then eventually after it hits Cuba it enters the Gulf for about a day or a day and a half and it might become a hurricane still although those chances have significantly diminished with that tracking over the land uh, so although we're still going to feel those major impacts unfortunately for those islands there is some good news and the good news is uh, they're going to do a great job at eating away this storm uh, so we might see a hurricane but I think strong tropical storm is more likely at this point for tropical storm Laura. All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to do the same thing for Tropical Storm Marco. All right, now, here we are taking a look at Tropical Storm Marco, and as you can see, uh, there's also been a pretty big shift in this storm, and the big shift is that it's not expected to hit the Yucatan Peninsula anymore. We're still expecting some moderate to major impacts there for the Yucatan Peninsula as far as rainfall and wind is concerned. However, it's a a really big shift in the forecast here that it is not expected to go on shore of the Yucatan Peninsula anymore. It's going to head basically in a northwesterly direction and then it's going to curve west. Uh, and most likely we're going to see a landfall there in Texas, somewhere from the very southern tip of Texas uh, to the very, uh, I would say, Louisiana and Texas border there. Somewhere in between there we're expecting a landfall. I still think a Louisiana landfall is possible. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery for both of these storms. Here's Tropical Storm Lara, and this was a little bit earlier actually. It's now located pretty much over Puerto Rico. But look at those grays and the whites and even the pinks in there. That is indicating extremely tall clouds. We're expecting heavy rainfall for Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, even possibly Cuba or more likely than not Cuba. Uh, the Bahamas could see some of that. Uh, I would say flash flooding is possible with some of those storms in the outer bands, but it's a 50-50 it's possibility. Uh, it's going to be hit or miss there, I think. Uh, but Jamaica, or Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Cuba, I think it's going to be consistent. And I think we could see some pretty widespread flooding from this one. 
All right, so this one is ha has very tall clouds looking very uh, intense. Now here's Marco, it's pretty much the same story. A little less organized, but we still have those whites and pinks. Uh, and as you can see, Cuba, the very, very western tip of Cuba there, uh, is seeing those taller clouds, probably expect, or, or probably seeing some very heavy rainfall right now. And I think the very northern Yucatan Peninsula is going to see similar impacts here from Tropical Storm Marco. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model and the intensity guidance for both of these storms. All right, now here we are taking a look at the the spaghetti model guidance here for Tropical Storm Lara. As you can see, pretty much all of these models have it tracking directly over Puerto Rico. It's actually over Puerto Rico now, so they were correct. And as you can see, moving forward after Cuba, there is the chance that it goes south or north of Cuba, uh, which would obviously make a difference in our intensity probably. Uh, but there's a likely uh, track now that we're expecting anywhere from, I would say, the Mississippi coast to maybe Texas. But Louisiana seems to be really in the crosshairs of this one. But as you can see, it's a very wide, uh, if you were to make an imaginary cone with all of these spaghetti models inside of it, which I don't usually recommend, but uh, obviously any model could be correct technically, so we do want to consider all options. Uh, it could hit anywhere from the Florida Panhandle to Texas, but the more likely, uh, more, more narrow track that we can forecast is I'm very, very likely that somewhere between the Texas-Louisiana border and then somewhere between there and then the Mississippi coast will be the most likely track. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Tropical Storm Laura model intensity guidance. And this one has really uh, lowered significantly. And I'll tell you why. It's because of that land interaction that I was talking about. It's very, very much so going to hinder this storm from developing, which is good news. Uh, the, those islands were always going to feel the same impacts. They're not going to see any more than they, they were going to if it was just to the north of those islands. Uh, so really, it's just a good, good news overall that the mountains are going to be able to eat up this storm. Uh, so it's probably going to stay a weak tropical storm, and once it re-enters the Gulf, it could intensify to a stronger tropical storm, maybe a Cat 1 there, as you can see, uh, at around 96 to 108 hours out. Uh, but it's going to sharply decrease in intensity once it hits the Louisiana coast or anywhere in the United States, and that'll be pretty much the end of tropical storm Lara. Now, here's our spaghetti model guidance here for tropical storm Marco, and as you can see, anywhere from the southern coast of Texas... Uh, to an, a Louisiana impact as possible at this point, but a central Texas coast impact looks to be the most likely at this point. And here's the intensity guidance for this one. Again, probably peaking at about a, a strong tropical storm, maybe category one, but I doubt it at this point. I think a strong tropical storm is the best bet for tropical storm Marco there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the impacts for this these two tropical storms. We're going to talk about the the wind speed and the total rainfall for these storms, and then we're going to get into our direct weather forecast for both of them. All right, so first things first, here's our tropical storm force wind speed probabilities, and this is mostly for Marco here in this zoomed in look. Uh, so basically what you need to know is this is a percent based uh, map for tropical storm force winds. So basically, uh, 39 miles per hour. As you can see, we have about a 50-50 chance there in those gold shades, but the reds and oranges is where you go kind of over 50% chance, which you can see most likely Louisiana has the best chance for seeing those tropical storm force winds. And that's going to be a, a pretty significant, that's sustained by the way. So this isn't gust, this is sustained winds here. So that's going to be a moderate amount of wind there. I wouldn't say that's a major wind, threat, but mostly a moderate wind threat there. Uh, I, I think we could see some limbs, some trees breaking. Uh, we're going to have a lot of rainfall, so that could really uh, soak up the ground and increase the amount of trees that we see fall down. It's really going to depend on if uh, we see our tropical storm Laura become a hurricane or not. That could really impact the forecast here. But for the most part, Marco seems to bring tropical storm impacts or about a 50-50 chance of tropical storm sustained winds to Texas and portions of Louisiana. Now, as we take a look at the hurricane force wind speed probabilities, as you can see, it's only at about a 10 to 20% chance in that lighter shade of green, and that's for Louisiana. So it's not looking likely that we see sustained hurricane force wind for anywhere in the United States, which is very good news. Uh, and then as we take a zoomed out look at our tropical storm force wind speed probabilities, Puerto Rico pretty much has a 90% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. Dominican Republic and Haiti, you have about a 50 to 70% chance, so very elevated amount of chance uh, that we see for the islands 
seeing at least tropical storm force winds. And then we see another area there in the Gulf, again, that we've already taken a look at towards Louisiana, where we have about a 50 to uh, about an 80% chance there in the golds to red shades there. Now let's take a look at the total rainfall forecast. And we're kind of taking a look at the western side and then the eastern side in just a moment. Basically, the greens to the blues is anywhere under an inch. Uh, the pinks is an inch to two inches, so we can see that's pretty widespread. The red is also widespread, and that's where we're seeing anywhere from two to four inches of rain. And then the golds, that's where we're at four inches plus, so four to six inches of rain is expected for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, uh, a little bit of Texas, and then the Florida Panhandle potentially too. Let's take a more eastern look here. As you can see, those golds are really widespread throughout the Gulf Coast there. Uh, so I would say that's probably moderate rainfall. Nothing major, I don't think, at this point. Major impacts were possible, obviously. Uh, and I was putting that in the thumbnail, obviously. Major impacts, question mark. Uh, but it doesn't appear that we're going to see those major impacts. It seems like uh, these storms with the land interaction are going to be a bit weaker than originally anticipated. So I would say probably moderate impacts there for the Gulf Coast. That doesn't mean take this one too lightly. Uh, that just means we're not expecting any major flooding or any major wind damage to be widespread. Uh, but there could be some more isolated or scattered events of those sorts. All right, now let's get into our direct weather forecast for these two tropical storms. First off, Tropical Storm Laura, again, expected to move over all of these islands, including Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and then Cuba. And then it's going to make its way towards Louisiana, uh, most likely, but potentially even Mississippi or Texas there, maybe even Alabama or the Florida Panhandle. I kept that in there just because it is a possibility, not a likelihood. All right, now for our Tropical Storm Marco forecast, which I accidentally left the Tropical Storm Laura title up there, but just ignore that. This is Tropical Storm Marco. Uh, it ex it's expected that we're going to see a curve back westward uh, before it hits Louisiana towards Texas, but I still kept a Louisiana impact possible there uh, just because it could head a little bit further north than anticipated. But anywhere from the southern tip of Texas uh, to about New Orleans has the chance of seeing impacts from Tropical Storm Marco here. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that either of these two systems will interact with each other and set in? I'm not even going to attempt to say that last part said the centers won't collide, but the outer band definitely will. And I think that's an interesting take because a lot of people were trying to say, you know, they're going to completely combine with each other. Uh, I think that's out of the question now. I don't think that's going to be happening. Uh, although I do think that it is possible that we see some outer bands interact, which is going to be very interesting and very, very unique. Now, anyway, for today's patron highlights of the day, I thank you all for supporting the channel here, uh, but especially our Diamond patrons, Madbirds and Mark J, as well as our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. I thank all of you for supporting the channel. If you would like to support the channel and be on this end screen, you can do so by checking out our exciting Patreon page in the description and pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I'll see you guys in the next video.